Hi, I'm Ron Means. Hopefully this will be the first of many uh, conversations about corruption in uh, elective official office. I'm speaking right now about Prairie View, Texas, city council member who was elected the mayor. His name is David Allen. I have it on good source that Mr. Allen is out perpetrating himself to be a police officer putting police jackets on and directing traffic and doing other things and he's the mayor. You know, and when, when this was told to me this morning by a former mayor of Prairie View, a friend of mine, I, I instantly thought back to my friend Roy Butler, who's deceased now, and his son is my friend Eddie. He had three, three kids. I don't really know his other two kids. His son Roy Jr. and a daughter. I never met her. But I remember when Roy Butler became the mayor of Austin. He owned a Lincoln Mercury Rolls Royce dealership that was on the corner of uh, Lamar and 6th Street. It's where Whole Foods is now. And McMarsh Ford has got GSDM uh, or G, yeah, GSDM, which is an advertising agency. And that's really owned by the Butlers, that property. I think they're leasing it to them. But at any rate, Rob Butler had this uh, 73, I remember the car because I sat in it, he had a 73 Lincoln black four-door town car, leather seats, it was nice. And he came over to my house to see my mother. So I went out and sat in the car and he had a little phone with a little round thing there. And I, that's when I got interested in having a telephone in my car. I always had a little mobile mobile uh, mobile, mobile com they call it mobile com you pick up the phone and you talk to the operator and tell them who you are and you pay a bill and you have mobile phone in your car so i was one of the first black people to do that but at any rate um well butler became the mayor and he put lights and sirens on his lincoln and he he, he was riding around going to you know because he was the mayor he's in charge of the police department he's in charge of everything he's the mayor but see, Austin is a weird little town because with Austin, you've got city managers really in charge of everybody. The mayor is a title. It's kind of like the Queen of England. The Queen of England is the Queen of England. And you're thinking, that's the rule. Uh-uh, Parliament is the rule. And then the Queen is a figurehead. Well, the mayor in Austin is over the council, but he's not really over everybody else. They just kind of hire the uh, city manager and the city manager is over everybody else. But to be a peace officer, they have lights and sirens. And in Texas, that means you got to have red and blue. Red is police, emergency blue. And when you put those kind of things on your car, you better be uh, authorized. And to be authorized, you have to go to the police academy. You got to go to the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. They call it T-Code. Used to be back then, it was called T-Close. And uh, that meant Texas Commission on Law Enforcement Officer Standard and Education. They just changed it to T-Code. And, and to go nowadays. And so to go to T-Code, you have to go to the police academy. You got to get trained. You got to learn about all the laws. You got to know how to handcuff people. You got to know what you can and can't do, you got to know how to fire a weapon, you got, you got to know when, when it's appropriate, and, and just all the procedures, and it's really, it's really daunting. You know, any, anytime someone can get to police academy, hey, my, hands are, my hat's off to them. I went to police academy. So, of course, I respect that. It's a wonderful thing when you got people that are trained. As long as they adhere to their training, they should be good. Well. Mayor Butler never went to police academy. So while he's out riding around with the red and blue lights on top of his Lincoln, which was really strange anyway, it was, but you know, hey, I'm, I've always been into it. And he had the blue and red lights behind his grill and shoot, man, he, he was the ball. We had, we had a hip mayor, he was cool. They made him take it off, cause he wasn't a cop. He couldn't go out, he couldn't ride around with red and blues. He couldn't get out of the car and go to accident scenes. He couldn't carry a gun. He couldn't do the things cops do. That's special. But this man in Prairie View, he thinks because he's the mayor and he's over the whole city, 
you know, and maybe they don't have a city manager. Maybe they just got the mayor. Because it's a little small town, a little dinky town with a thousand people or something. Who knows? They probably don't even have that many. Because it's a college over there. Prairie View a m is over there. And so he's, he hires the police chief or the council does, and he's the leader and everything. And, you know, he might be a really nice guy, but he's very ignorant because he's not a peace officer. And you haven't been to police academy. You're not authorized to pack a weapon as a police officer. Of course, it's nowadays in Texas as a private citizen, you can go and get your weapon. Or if you're a retired police officer, you can carry your weapon. But I don't believe Mr. Allen has ever been a retired police officer. And I'm, I don't know if he's authorized to pack a weapon, but I know damn well he ain't authorized to have a jacket that says police on it and to be out directing traffic with a badge. He's not a police officer. And he really don't have no authority. And I would say that whoever the head of the Prairie View Police Department is that allowed that to happen needs to, you know, face consequences for allowing that. Because how can you do that? I mean, we're not talking about the sheriff. Now, the sheriff could deputize someone and say, I deputize you and you go out and do this. Or, or the constable, if they have a constable in that county, I don't know. I don't live there. But I know in Travis County, Constable deputizes people all the time and they go out and write handicapped people tickets and all this other stuff and they're just like having being a peace officer, but I don't believe they can pack weapons if they're unless they've been to police academy. I don't believe they can have anything on them that says they're a police officer unless they've been to police academy. And I know that's the rule. I just got off the T Close board, T Cole board. So I kinda know one of the boards. I just got off of it. And I may still officially be on it. I don't know. I never got a letter from them telling them they accepted my resignation. But I resigned back in November. And at the end of the day, when you start, you stop and think about it, what kind of person would do that? Now, he's the mayor. Let me tell you something else about Prairie View. Prairie View has an a economic development board. And I talk about this in other videos where, you know, how like uh, if, if we could get Samsung to move to Prairie View, for instance, I don't live in Prairie View, but if they wanted to get Samsung to move to Prairie View and they could entice them to come, they could offer them tax breaks and all this other stuff to get them to move and hire people there and build up the community and all this. this there's a board that would determine that called a 4B Economic Board. And it's got to go through the state. It's a corporation. And this is how they do it. It's just... All, all throughout Texas. I don't know about Alabama, Mississippi, and New York, and Wisconsin, and California, and all them other places, but I know about Texas. And you have these boards that you create, and you have citizens on the boards. And then you have an elected president of the board. And their, their job is to try to get people to come move into that community so they can elevate the tax base so to help pay the street and bridge and the police department and all this other stuff because they don't want to be a community that's got cops out there with radar guns pulling over everybody driving through to help pay salaries. So they have to find other ways to rejuvenate the economy and do that kind of stuff. And that's the purpose of that board, not the city council. The city council's job is to manage the, the, the place. The, the economic board's job is to try to entice people to come in and to do charitable things like uh, set up a civic center or, you know, whatever whatever it is they need to do to try to help the community. Well, this guy became the mayor. He decided that it was too much money in the economic tax money in the economic board. So he decided he wanted to get some of that money. So he goes down to the bank. Now, I'm not slandering him because I know what I'm talking about. He goes to the bank and tells the bank, he's, because he's the mayor, he wants the checkbook. <laughs> on the 4B board. He's not on the board. And so he presents a document to the, to the bank to do that. That's illegal. Now let's see. My friend called me who's on the board of the 4B and he asked me because he knows I'm pretty knowledgeable in some stuff. Okay, I'm not the greatest, most uh, exquisite, elaborate person in the world. You know, I'm not that smart. I'm pretty smart though. And I, he says, uh, well, Ron, what do I do? I said, well, man, I call the Texas Rangers because I, 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 first I thought we called Travis County because normally when the Travis County 
being the seat of the state capital, government, county, county seat, they would be over all public corruption cases. Normally. But after that, District Attorney Rosemary Lindbergh got DWI and didn't step down. The governor tried to get her to step down and she wouldn't. So he took the money away from Travis County and distributed it to different counties to do their own public integrity corruption stuff. Well, when that happened, it messed up everything. So now this district attorney doesn't have no power. So you have to go to each other. But then they, the state said, well, you go to Texas Rangers. Let the Texas Rangers investigate it and then take and present the case to each grand jury. So that's how it was. And now that we got another district attorney, I think they're getting it, they're getting it back together like it's supposed to be, where the county seat government uh, does its investigation. Kind of like if you think about what happened in Ferguson, Missouri with uh, Michael Brown, that the, 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 the attorney for the county that that happened in didn't, they didn't go to a grand jury in that county. They went all the way up to St. Louis, Missouri, because that's the capital. And that's why that, you got to understand why it went to there, because there's, there's a reason for it. There's a reason for the nexus of why it happened. So now what we got is, I'm telling him, I said, look, man, I would call either the Texas Ranger, and I tried to get him the name of someone, and I found a guy named Jeter who was located in Huntsville, Texas. I, I called some friends of mine with DPS, Department of Public Safety in Austin, and they told me to get a hold of this guy. And he would never answer his phone, kept getting voice messages. So we found his, uh, through the internet, we found his, uh, uh, his email, sent him an email, never responded. Hmm. Okay, that's curious. Okay, well, let's go to the FBI. So we went to the FBI complaint about this. And sure enough, the FBI kind of responded, but they're kind of slow because they're doing other stuff. It's not really that important. It's no big deal. It's, it'll, it'll be all right. I mean, that case will still be there no matter when. So I don't know if they own it or not. I really don't care because I don't live there. It's not my problem. But I did report it. I did help get it reported. And so I'm like... Wow. So now the guy, this mayor, now, today, yesterday actually, yesterday was Wednesday. Was yesterday Wednesday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Okay. So today, they want the guy Wednesday. Today, they want the guy that's in charge of the 4B economic board to come in and bring all the 4B stuff because the council voted to dissolve it because the guy can't get control of the checkbook because the guy in charge of the 4B board went to the bank took all of the statues and everything and showed them how this guy couldn't be over it. that the mayor didn't have any power to write checks and then you know because they're trying to steal money out of the coffers I mean this this is some serious truth to power conversation here. and when you stop and think about all the stuff that people do to steal. This is this is like public public trust, public theft, all kinds of stuff. He's out perpetrating to be a police officer. He goes to the bank and takes a letter saying he's over this. He, how could he be over that? That's two separate corporations. The city is a corporation and the 4B Economic Board is a corporation. And you can't, right? It's a conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest. So how on earth could you think that because you're the mayor, you could go out and be a police officer. How could you think you could go into the bank and tell them you're in charge now and give me the checkbook? How could you have friends come and trying to collect uh, money and the board hadn't voted to give them no money? Well, you because you think you've got power. Okay? Well, I'm speaking truth to your power. You have no power because it has to be legal. There's a way to do it. There's a way not to do it. Now, the way to do it, if you want the money, is to come and present your case to the board and let the board vote and decide whether they're going to give you this money or not. And it has to be for something that's for the public. But you just can't do it just because you're the mayor. You're nobody. You're not on the board. Oh, you voted yourself on the board. Okay. You have a conflict being on the board 
to take this money because you're also the mayor. So you can step down from being the mayor and get on the board, put yourself on the board. Now, if you become the president of the board by election of the other members of the board, now you can write the check and you steal all the money you want. If that's what you're trying to do. I don't know. I don't know you, brother. But I know there's a way to do it. And the way you're doing it is not right. So, anyway, I'm Ron Means. I live in Austin, Texas. This is my opinion. I don't know you. But I know one of the people, one of the players. And I've seen some documents. I saw your, for, your forged your lie to the bank. Saw it. Got a copy of it. So, it's all good. Good luck. Good luck in your endeavors. Either step down from being the mayor and get on that board and work your way up to being the president or quit trying to mess with public money because it ain't cool. We all work hard to be who we are. When I, when I went to police academy, I had to take a test. I passed my test. I became a peace officer. I tried to do the right thing. And even though I haven't been a peace officer for over, almost 30 years, it's not over 30 years, almost 30 years, I still think like a cop. And I'm very proud of it. So, there you go to your truth, to your power. <laughs>